My LEDs are being switched on and off by one of these PIR sensors. They're going on and off a bit randomly at the moment because I have them on very small settings for sensitivity and time. So they're just on for a few seconds and keep coming on and off. These are really useful and affordable sensors. With just a few components you can use them to make a simple on or off switch which detects motion. Or if you connect them to a board like an Arduino or Raspberry Pi, you can make a sophisticated system for switching on mains lighting, heating, alarms, maybe even gates or door openers, just about anything you can think of. Today I'm going to look at how to make a motion controlled lighting sensor using just a PIR sensor and a transistor. I'll go through the components needed for the circuit, how it works and how to connect it up and then I'll show a finished example. PIR sensors are usually supplied as a module. The sensor's on a board with a few other components and two trimmers to adjust the timing and sensitivity. The right side trimmer, or the one marked TX, adjusts the time that the sensor stays on, from a few seconds to about five minutes. After the on period has ended, there's a short break before the sensor resets and is ready to switch on again. The left side trigger, or the one marked SX, adjusts sensitivity. When it's turned fully left or counterclockwise, you have to really get close before being detected. As you turn it to the right or clockwise, it becomes more and more sensitive and it's best not to go too far with this or it just keeps triggering all the time at the slightest disturbance. So a midway position will probably suit most situations best. There are three connections, power, ground and signal. Power and ground need to be connected all the time and can operate from around 5 volts to 12 volts. If the voltage drops much below 5 volts, the sensor may start to behave strangely and your lights will flash on and off at random. The module board includes a voltage regulator, so as long as you keep between about 5 and 12 volts, it will power itself correctly at 3.3 volts. The sensor has a Fresnel lens over it. This helps to direct the infrared radiation so that it can detect any changes. When it detects a change in the infrared around it, the sensor triggers and the signal line goes high to around 3.3 volts. The simplest possible circuit is to connect the signal line to an LED and then to see the LED light up when motion is detected. This will work, or it may do, but it's likely to be erratic unless the very important pull-down resistor is added. The signal line is high when it's triggered by motion and when there's no motion detected it should be low but this line can just float or be affected by interference of some kind, switching things on and off apparently randomly. A 10K resistor connected between the signal pin and ground will make sure that the voltage is kept low when it's not being triggered, making the circuit behave reliably. So, how can we use the sensor to control a larger project? 3.3 volts from a signal pin is not enough to power anything more than a single LED. The answer is to use a transistor as a switch. Applying a voltage to the base of the transistor allows current to pass between its collector and emitter. This is a good way to control a lighting circuit by using a small voltage to switch a larger voltage. So if you put an LED in the collector circuit of the transistor, applying a voltage to the base of the transistor will switch it on. If we combine this circuit with the PIR sensor setup we've just looked at, then the signal pin of the sensor will switch on the transistor when it's triggered by infrared and then the light will come on. I've used this idea here to switch on a whole string of LEDs using a 9 volt battery as the power source. The same battery can power the PIR sensor circuit and the LEDs with the LEDs making full use of the 9 volts available. This is also a great way of making light to illuminate a hallway or stairs at night using very little power so your batteries will last a long time. Now let's look at how to make the circuit and I'll start by putting it together on a breadboard. First, let's go through the parts and tools needed to make the lighting controller. Along with the PIR sensor module, I have a 2N2222 transistor and actually any small NPN transistor could be used. I'm going to start with a single 10mm diffused LED and I'm going to power the circuit with a 9 volt battery. The LED is designed to work at around 3 volts and 20 milliamps, so I'll need a current limiting resistor to drop around 6 volts, which works out at around 330 ohms. I also need a 10K pull-down resistor, 
some male to female DuPont leads for the PIR sensor, some jumper wires for the breadboard and a battery snap. Later, I'll experiment with trying a fairly large capacitor to smooth out the switching on and off of the lights. Now let's start putting it all together. I'll start with the transistor and connect the emitter to ground. The current limiting resistor goes in line with the LED as it connects the collector of the transistor to the positive rail. Now I'll connect the PIR module voltage and ground connections and the signal line to the base of the transistor. The all-important pull-down resistor comes next between the signal wire and ground. All that's needed now is to connect the battery to the voltage and ground rails of the breadboard. When it's first switched on, the sensor takes a while to adjust to its surroundings and the LED flashes on and off a few times. After a minute or so, this stabilises and when I approach, the LED switches on. I've left it on its lowest sensitivity and pointing away from me to try it out. Some boards have a jumper which you can switch from H to L. H means re-triggering, so if you stay moving around the sensor, the light will stay on until you move away. L means single triggering, so once it's triggered the light will stay on for its set time and then go off again until a new motion is detected nearby. Retriggering is probably the best way to leave it set up in most circumstances. Now that we've seen this works very effectively, here's an idea to make a gentle night light effect. If I had a fairly large capacitor from about 220 to 1000 microfarads connected from the transistor base to ground, then the sudden switching on or off of the lights is smoothed out, giving a gradual brightening or dimming effect. When the signal is sent to the base of the transistor, the capacitor steals the electricity from the base to charge itself up, stopping the transistor from turning on the light. The capacitor gradually fills up though, taking less and less electricity until it's fully charged and all the voltage is going to the base of the transistor and the light is at full brightness. When triggering finishes, the capacitor lets go of its electricity slowly, keeping the light on and gradually dimming it as it charges. So here's the final project, soldered up on a small piece of strip board. This is now usable as a module to go inside a night light for example, or in the circuit I have here to control some decorative LEDs. These only come on when someone is around, so the battery life is not wasted. It's really useful and practical. These are coming on and off a lot because I have very short settings on for timing and sensitivity. But if I turn it up a bit, they would just come on for a few minutes or even stay on all the time when I was in the room, which would be great. And then when I go out, they'll switch off and the battery will be saved. You can build this circuit up to make anything you like, and I hope you have fun with your own projects. As ever, I hope you found this demonstration useful. There's information about PIR sensors and how to use them on our website, q26.co.uk and all the components I've used today and many more are available in our online shop. It would be great to hear about your projects and any comments or feedback that you have, so please leave a comment below or get in touch by email, social media or through our website. It helps us if you give our videos a like, thank you, and please keep up with us by subscribing to our channel. I'll be back with more electronics projects soon. Thanks for watching.